Well, guess where we are now? We're back in the lab again. And so what we did with Miss Reed was we refreshed her provisional denture. Prior to refreshing it, we put it in flasks, a Lang duplicating flask. So between that time we gave her her provisionals back, between the time we gave her her provisional back and now, Charlie has made duplicates of her provisionals. And if you'll notice, still has bite blocks. He's actually custom characterized it. And so it's made it look real pretty. You can do, you can do this two ways. You can make clear, I mean, tooth colored teeth with white acrylic or you can order a second set of teeth and put the teeth into the jigs when you process it. I believe this time these are just acrylic, tooth colored acrylic that he fabricated and then put the pink on and then he used a characterization material to make it look pretty. And so Kathy's putting Miss Reed in she has already mixed the flow cast and put it in a monojet syringe for each one. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our duplicates in the flask with flow cast so that we can provide Miss Reed with a flow casted duplicate of what she's been wearing. Now let me, let me tell you one more time. If you give the, the patient back their old denture the problem you're gonna have is it's gonna beat the tissue down and cause the same problems that they walked in the front door with. So I would encourage you to, to make them a duplicate. Dr. Turbyfield used to say that if they haven't <clears throat> paid their bill yet, give them their old denture back. They'll call you in 24 hours and say, I can't wear this thing. And so we don't do that. So let me show you how to put the flow cast into the duplicate dentures. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Vaseline on the outside of the denture. The duplicate denture. I'm gonna put it on the palate, the teeth, and all of that. Then I'm gonna put it teeth side down into the duplicating jig then I'm going to put a little Vaseline on the putty of the duplicating jig. And I'm going to put it liberally on the tissue side. I just want the flow cast to let go. This is very similar to when you're putting the flow cast in the diagnostic denture at the beginning of this process. Here's her lower. Gonna do the same thing. All on the outside. These duplicates will also serve as her spare denture after we make her final. I'm gonna put that tooth side down. And then I'm gonna put a little Vaseline on the putty surfaces. Again, this is just a releasing agent. We worried when we were first fabricating and coming up with a formula for Flowcast, would the Vaseline retard the set of the Flowcast? And what we found is we've tried a whole bunch of different separating mediums, Vaseline is the best. So we just went back to Vaseline. Now the whole time we've been working and getting ready, the flow cast and the syringes has been setting. So I'm gonna test it out a little bit. I'm just gonna flip that over and squirt a little bit out. It's gonna be pretty runny, as you can see. But frankly, we're gonna put this into a closed system. That's why this is a flask, not a jig. So this closed system's not gonna let the flow cast 
run out everywhere. So we can go pretty loose with the flow cast. I'm gonna put a little bit around the borders. Kathy mixed these at the same time. So they're gonna be about the same consistency. She did double mix. Okay, and then we're gonna put some in the lower. You can see how the Monojet syringe makes this so much easier. And even though you've used the Monojet, you can take a, an instrument like a little spatula and just make sure it's up where you want it. I can smooth the inside a little bit and roll it to the outside. Then we're gonna close these down. And we're gonna use one of my favorite devices. These little quick grips that we cut the handles of. Come on, little fella. There we go. Allow you to squeeze that down good and tight and then close this little set screw. Okay, now we can go ahead and close the lower. You always like to see a little excess. This handle's a little longer. set screws tightened up, we can take the little quick grips off. We shortened the stick on this quick grip so that we could actually put it in the uh, pressure pot with these. But what we found is it's not necessary that you, once you've got the set screw set. So I'm going to drop these in the pressure pot. Taylor's going to stop the video and I'll be right back with you with her provisions. Okay, Kathy brought me Miss Reed's provisional denture. She's been wearing this provisional for several months because she got sick while we were fabricating it. The other thing is we made a lot of changes in this one. We actually moved the anterior teeth and we changed the bike block. You can see I added tooth colored material. And this is what's great about a bike block is it allows you to change that vertical dimension, upper or lower, or move it Buccolingually, Miss Reed's number one concern this through this whole time is she was biting her tongue. And what we realized is that we had the teeth too far back and the bite block too far to the lingual. So we had to move the teeth out, the bite block to the buckle. And on this side, we didn't really have to modify the bite block much. But what you'll notice is the bicuspids are totally encapsulated or engulfed with pink acrylic because we added it in. So she's comfortable, she's doing great. We refreshed this last Thursday and there's the video is on the Flowcast website of just exactly how to do the refresh. And there's a couple things I want you to notice. Look at this little place right here. That wasn't there until we refreshed it. We picked up a little bit of border right here. And that's that median labial frenum has caused that. The other thing, we got a really nice border on the lingual now. You can see the S curve, the S curve. That's what's gonna hold that lower denture down. And then on the upper, it just resurfaced the whole inside. We picked up a nice border out here, lateral to the tuberosity. And you can see the little coronoid notch has been made on both sides. So the refreshing process just makes the whole thing more accurate. And actually, Charlie will tell you, easier to process. So what we're going to do now 
means we're going to make a face bow of the upper. And then, come in close, Taylor. I'm going to cut some little grooves in the bike block. I marked it with a black pen. I'm going to cut some little grooves. So then we're going to take a putty bite record, and those little grooves are going to index the bite record for us. And then that way, Charlie will be able to mount this, then box bead and pour, and do our finalization. And the whole time, she's going to be wearing a flow-casted duplicate of these. So we're going to run in there and do those two things, the bike record and the face bow. Be right back. Okay, so I've taken the lane duplicating fast flask out of the pressure pot. We left them in there for about five to seven minutes. And I want you to take a look at that flow casted duplicate. That's unbelievable. The benefit of the closed system, you can see the excess is like paper thin. And it's an exact duplicate of what she's been wearing. So it should be just as comfortable. What I'll do is I'll take a little buffalo knife and pop that out. And you can see just very minimal excess. I can take a hot knife and just trim that off. If I've got any areas that I might want to um, add to, I can make a little mix and add some. Here's the lower. I just opened this one up and you can see the excess is almost non-existent. See that right there? Again, having the closed system doesn't allow the flow cap just to run run all out the back of the of the jig if you were using the old jig. So I would encourage you to incorporate the uh, Lang flask in your techniques. Now I will say this: Dr. Turbyfield and Dr. Pound would be telling me not to do that. But I have to tell you, the newer material, the flow casted material, responds beautifully to that closed system. You can't get it much better than that. And it really took us only about 10 minutes. We've got her provisional, her bike record, her face bow. We're gonna leave it up to Charlie to fabricate her finals. And I'm gonna go slip these in her mouth, let her wear them while we're working. I really wanted to show you this. We use the Coist bow or the Panadit Facial Analyzer face bow, and particularly for uh, removable because it incorporates the midline of the face and everything, and I really like it. And for a denture, what we use is we use putty on the little plastic bite fork mount. And so it's very stable. Charlie can box bead and pour this, then he can mount it, and then, I also cut those little grooves. And if you'll notice, I put the grooves on the side of the bike block, not the top, because I wanna keep the top intact. And since it was made right on here, you know it's gonna fit. If I can find the right way to go on here. And so, now I can take the upper now what we have is we have an only arc of closure, the face bow, and we've got a nice clean putty bite record. So once he gets those box beaded and poured, then we have all the information we need to make a really, really, really good final complete upper and lower dentition.